Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Come On CFL. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have the one, the only, our CFL expert, seven-time, seven-year retired vet, three-time Grey Cup champion, Nick Taylor with me. Nick, what happened this week in the CFL? In the CFL, what happened this week? Let's start off with Edmonton and Ottawa. We're just going to jump into it. It was a great week of football. Offense wasn't so great, but hey, at the end of the day, most of these games come down to the last three minutes. That's what makes CFL special. So we're going to start off with the first game of the week was Edmonton and Ottawa um, coming off of a five-day rest schedule, and they play a rubber, they play a repeat game. Um, this was just – it wasn't an exciting game. It wasn't too much fun. It was just, you know, two teams going at it, and at the end of the day, one team had to win. You had to give a team a win, and um, – Ottawa came out with it 24 to 14 victorious, but it wasn't a great game from either team. Definitely offensively. Drew Brown had two interceptions, um, turned the ball over in uh, times where he tried to make plays by extending the play, just didn't get it done. Uh, and Edmonton offense was just anemic, but they did have three field goal attempts that their kicker missed, just flat out missed. Boris Beattie, not known to be the most accurate person over his overall career. He blew them. They just didn't give them a chance to, you know, even be in a game like they should have if he just made his field goals. Um, but Edmonton, I have a one problem with them. They 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 start McLeod Bethel at quarterback. He's their starting quarterback. This is who you went to go get. But now you've got this new coach, Jerry Jackson, who becomes the head coach over uh, Chris Jones, and he decides let's give Trey Ford some run, the guy who actually won them games last year. I have no problem with that. If you're going to make that decision, make that decision. Make them play split evenly or something like that. But you, after McLeod starts off a little slow, you bring in Trey just for two possessions. They get nothing going. You take him out for the rest of the game. If he's in your plans, he's in your plans. Or if he's not, you want to make him play one play, you let him play one play. You come out, you put McLeod in. But you let McLeod get cold, and even though granted he did not do anything for the much of the first half, and then you bring him back in the game to say, hey, win this game for us. And he, unfortunately, he couldn't. So that game was just not the one of the funnest games. Um, Edmonton offense, you're paying these receivers. Um, one week, Eugene is starting to come back on and come alive, and he goes seven for 74. But then you got Dylan Mitchell, who, who falls off the face of the earth, four for 25. You got Curly getting six for 17. Is that, I know running backs with better averages than six for 17, Rudy. That's a three yard. That's less than three yards. So they got to get together on offense. Their defense played a little bit better this week from what they normally give up 30 points a game. So that was that game right there. We're going to move on to Winnipeg and Sass, one of the best rivalries in football. Um, another game, low scoring. Um, I picked Winnipeg to win this game. I thought they would um, make Shea Patterson have a bad game, um, not get things done. But Shea Patterson played relatively well. Um, he kept the drive scoring, 17 for 25, 261, a touchdown. Um, they got the running game going with Ouellette, 19 carries, 88 yards. They pounded Winnipeg a little bit. Just an ugly game. Winnipeg have a chance at the end to, to tie the game. They get a big play to Nick Dembski, um, and he gets strip sacked from the back by Jameer Thurman. Um, a hell of an effort, man. The man come and chase him down, grab him by the shoulder pads, and punch the ball out. Big turnover seals the game. Sass go down, kick the field goal. Game's over right there. Zach Calero's got to get back rolling. He's the MOP the past couple years besides last year. Um, he's just been off track, man. Hella interceptions this year, just throwing the ball away, inopportune interceptions. They got the game. They're coming back. They're in, you know, the offense is rolling, and he throws the, a pick. When the guy's open, just doing too much sometimes for Zach, man. Throw the ball to the open guy, continue to drive and get things rolling. You got to check down to, to Brady Oliveira the whole game because – uh, Sass is not giving up the big plays, and you just refuse to take the play that's there. You're trying to make things happen when you don't even have your best receivers out there. Take what's there, let the defense continue to play good like they've been doing, and then find a way to get the win at the end, Zach. That's what you have to do right now with the team. You're, that's just what it is. Um, so Sass come up with a big win. Defense plays great. Um, a Jew, a Jew, the rookie um, receiver, comes in for Schaefer Baker, and he goes for um, four catches for – over 100 yards in the second half. Just comes in off the bench and he just lights it up big. His energy, his charisma changed the game whole, all around in the second half. Um, so that's what happened in that game. A big Adam Big Hill, um, there's five seconds left in the game, three seconds left in the game. Um, Shea Patterson just supposed to back up and throw the ball in the air, let the clock run out. He decides to scramble. Big Hill comes in on a blitz and just punishes him at the end of the game, drives him to the ground. Um, 
both benches get off the field. They're, they're in each other's faces. But that just shows you the rivalry of this, of this, you know, the magnitude of this rivalry. And, and, and it's balls to the walls for all four quarters, all 15 minutes. And the next time they play each other, when it comes to the Banjo Bowl and um, around Labor Day, there's going to be some fireworks going on from that last play of the game. Um, I don't have a problem with what Big Hill, Big Hill did because Shea Patterson should have just threw the ball away. He scrambles instead and takes a, a necessary hit when the game is over. Just throw the ball out of bounds next to your receiver, and the clock will run out. So that's what happened in that game. Big win for Sass. They keep it rolling. Next game, we got Toronto and Hamilton. Um, I won't stay too long on this game. <laughs> um, Toronto, I, I thought they would win the game, but um, just watching their team, man, you have an average quarterback with – Average receivers, man. Um, the, the rookie quarterback just is not seeing the field. Um, not rookie quarterback, second year, Cameron Dukes. is not seeing the field very well. Um, they need their quarterback to come back, Chad Kelly to come back badly because he's not seeing the field. He's holding the ball too long. He's he has to force the scramble instead of making the reads when he needs to make it. And then the receivers are just not scary enough. Nobody on the, on the receiver staff scares you. Nobody like, oh, shit, we have to worry about that guy. Back up. Watch out. He's, he's a threat. And when you have a, a receiver group like that compared with a quarterback who can't see the field, <laughs> their offense is just going to be anemic. And that's basically what Toronto's do. They try to, you know, make the offense be a little bit better by running the ball. But, they, you know, when you fall down because of turnovers from your quarterback, he fumbles the ball on the second and one. Um, you get a block punt from Hamilton to start the game that puts them in, in you know, scoring range, and they, they cash in on that. That's two touchdowns for Hamilton. They go up 17-0, and then your quarterback is not, you know, it doesn't have the power or the game to bring you back in situations where you're down. So their their offense is just not good right now. Um, I see them going downhill until Chad Kelly comes back. You need a quarterback who's going to light up the receivers and get them going. And right now that can't happen. I think they might make a change to the backup quarterback, Nick Arbuckle. They did make that change that game. And he came in and he moved the ball down the field well. I'm looking forward to seeing him get some reps against Winnipeg this week. Um, the last game, man, um, <laughs> BC versus Calgary, 24 to 25. Oh, my bad. Shout out to Toronto that game. Um, Janarian Grant, another punt return, the most dynamic punt return in the league. That's three punt, re three punt returns or kickoff returns in the, in the past three games. He's, he's on a roll right now. He's keeping them in the game. Actually, Toronto come back at the end of the game and they just didn't get a chance to win it. They just didn't, couldn't pull it out. Um, but BC Calgary, 24 to 25. Vernon Adams finally has a pedestrian game. He's 19 for 31, um, 17 for 31, two interceptions, two touchdowns, 191 yards. Their offense, net offense, 254 yards. That's just not going to get it done in that game, or 274. Um, Calgary came out there, and they just were the more aggressive team. They they didn't care about penalties, obviously, because they had 12 from 180, but they just punished VA from the get-go. They pummeled him. They blitzed him. They played man, press man against their, their receivers, and, and it worked for them. VA missed a couple of throws, but I'm going to say that's because early in the game, he got hit hard by Judge, the linebacker from Ottawa. He got hit hard by Dozier. You know, early on, he was wincing. He, he felt it. You know, Calgary um, coach Munson, defense coordinator, his, his, I'm pretty sure he went this week and said, hey, we're going to hit the shit out of Vernon Adams this week, and then he, he has to beat us that way, but we're not just going to let him sit back there and do what the hell he wants. And they got him off his spot. They pressured him, pressured him, pressured him. Um, the old lineman got killed by Calgary D lineman. One one old lineman, Perkins, got three penalty, two penalties in a row after he got beat for a sack. The one before that. Um, so Calgary, Jake Myers played a real good game, man. He's been playing well this year. Twenty five for thirty two, three hundred seven, three touchdowns, and he leads them to a victory. Um, their defense, like I said, just played tremendous. They just were smacking the hell out of the BC. They were physical. And they showed it. They, I mean, that game had too much turnovers, 23 – I mean, turnovers. Too many uh, penalties, 23 in total. Calgary 12 for 180, BC 11 for 70. But they just played press man, kept Alexander Hollins, one of the leading receivers in the league, one catch to seven yards. McKinnis, the leading receiver in the league, three for 55. So um, that's how they stopped them. That's how they won that game. They pulled it out at the end. Just – it was brutal to watch, but at the end of the day, Calgary get the win that they need. So – I forgot to do this, and I keep forgetting. This show is partnered with Bet99. I meant they to tell you that. They are a partner, and uh, please be sure to use our code COMEON99, all capital letters. And when you sign up, and please be sure to bet responsibly. You get a $1,500 match off your first bet. 
So support them. By supporting them, you're supporting us. And we thank you in advance. Yeah, baby. Please, please bet responsibly. Now that we're gone through the, the recap, let's jump right into uh, Nick's power rankings. Um, okay. What is your ranking? What are your rankings this week after uh, this after, week of football? After this week of football, where offense wasn't that great, a lot of penalties, a little shaky week. Um, um, the team that never lets me down, the Edmonton. I was about to say Edmonton Oilers, <laughs> the Edmonton Elks. Um, they finish at they're at number nine. No reason to move them. Not winning games at the end of the day. Um, Hamilton stays at eight after they get their first win of the season, um, particularly because of their defense and their special teams make big plays. Offense wasn't that great, but they did enough to win. Toronto, they're at seven, at three and three. I don't like the way they're playing lately. One and three in the last four games, um, not playing very well. I'm not a fan of how their quarterback is playing, um, and their offense is quite pedestrian. If um, Kadeem Carey is not running the ball like he should be running the ball, probably 20 times a game he needs he needs the ball in his hand of carries. Um, at number six, um, Winnipeg, two and five. Um, I just think that they're playing better than Toronto right now. Even though Toronto got a win last week, um, like they haven't been playing well. Winnipeg is two and three out of their two one two out of their last three. Um, and they play this week, and you know that probably is a factor why I got Winnipeg at five. At number, at number, ooh, Winnipeg's at six. I'm sorry, my bad. At number five, we have Ottawa. Um, their record is pretty good, four and two, but two of them wins against Edmonton. Another win is against uh, Hamilton, and the other one is against Winnipeg. So um, I need them to win a game against one of the top teams for me to move them up. I I don't firmly believe in them completely yet. I'm not sold. At the end of the day, Rudy, wins are freaking wins. Um, we had an argument about this the other day. As long as you get it, you'll take it, and then at the end, you decide how you figure it out later on about wherever you end up. But, shit, get to the playoffs. And they haven't been there in a while. At number four, I moved Calgary up a couple spots after that big, impressive win against BC. They have to cut down on those turnovers, I mean, on, on those penalties. 12 for 180, you can't win like that much games, but they find a way to do it at home. Um, and their defense finally played a complete game, better a better game. They they challenged BC. Um, that was a, that was good for them to get back in the win column. At number three, BC drops a spot. Um, didn't like that performance. Um, VA looked a little rattled, look, look, look a little hurt. Um, so I moved them down to three. Number two, Montreal have a bye week five and one. And number one goes and goes back to the number well, stay at number one. It says five and one. And that's how we roll in sats with a big win over Winnipeg. All right. So there we have it. Edmonton 9, Hamilton 8, Toronto 7, Winnipeg 6, Ottawa 5, Calgary 4, BC 3, Montreal 2, and SAS is number 1. Yes, sir. We're, we're, we're making good time today, ladies and gentlemen, so you can watch our entire episode so we don't drag on for an hour plus. They like me talking. We will have uh, future interviews as well, so be on the lookout for that. Um, let's jump into uh, Nick's awful picks of the week. Nick went 0-4 last week. He picked everyone that lost. Yep. <laughs> I mean, so, all, so all the home teams won last week. I, I hope y'all aren't using these these picks to make y'all bets. Or y'all can pick. That, that, makes, that, makes him, that makes him 4-8 and eight over three weeks. I mean, That's, can we step it up, man? All right. Like, you're, this, you're, this supposed, is, you're supposed to be an expert for Christ. This is the week, Rudy. This is the week. Yeah, four and he, keeps, he keeps he keeps picking his favorite teams. No, 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 no. I pick. Mm. I didn't pick my favorite team. I only have one favorite team. You and, picked Winnipeg, and I don't play for them, so they're not my favorite team. I just you know see. I just go by what I see. I'm projective. That's perspective and objective okay, I when I come to this. And and that's how I pick my games. He's Last week was a bad week. Everybody had a bad week before. Even Jordan was three for eighteen in the game. So huh. this week we come back better. We come back shooting like um Kobe say, you miss every shot that you don't take. So um, we have uh let's go pull the schedule up again. We got Sass at Montreal. Oh. Saskatchewan at Montreal. Oh, what was the number? Three point five. You have it at three point five from yeah. Best Step? Yep. Really? I'm looking at minus two. It might have changed there. because of the injuries with Cody Fajardo, oh, but I just looked at it. It's, it's minus, I mean, I'm looking at it right this second. It says minus two. Minus two for who? For, for Sass. Minus okay. two. I'm sorry, Montreal. Montreal, minus two and a half. Okay. 
So uh, I got, but oh, so what they have says plus three point five, right? I don't know what that means. I, I, that I mean, that mean, they gave they given they given says three point five points. So the game starts off three point five to zero for but, Sass. But but Montreal's two and a half. Like I've never. This so, is not how NFL lines they move work. the lines. That's how they get to move the lines and and okay. put the odds at a different. You know, one could All be right. one minus one thirty five, minus one fifteen, plus one twenty five. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll understand. You, the, the no, one I've, I've, I've looked at Vegas odds. I've never seen Vegas odds look like this for an NFL football game. Okay. So, so this week, I'm taking Saz plus 3.5. Um, Cody Fajardo looked like he's not playing. If Caleb Evans have to play, I'm going with Saz for the win, but I'm also going with Saz to cover 3.5. Give him 3.5. Saz, the way they've been playing, they'll, they'll, they'll get this game. They'll win. Shea Patterson is playing amazing as a backup quarterback. He's holding the fort down to Trevor Harris get back. Um, I like them. They, you know, you keep it rolling. Shea Patterson, Saz. I love it. Their defense, um, Roland Milligan, Jameer Thurman, they're falling. Keep it going. Um, at number, let's see, at number two. Hold on, I'm tripping. All right. Um, Calgary at Ottawa. Um, I'm just going with Calgary for the win. I got them at minus 110. I think Calgary pulls out that win in Ottawa. The way they've been playing, Diedrich Mills gets over 100 yards this game. That's the way I'm feeling. They run the ball. They they get the win. That's just the money line one. Uh, the next game, I got Winnipeg. Pulls it over Toronto. Plus 100. I'm like Winnipeg to get this win just because I don't like – I know, I know, Rudy. Don't look at me that way. I just don't like the way that their quarterback is playing in Toronto. I don't like the way Zach Caleros is playing either, but I'm going to go with the two-time M- back-to-back MOP – over the the second year player or Nick Arbuckle, who might come off the bench and stop this game. Um, I just I'm just not rolling with it. Nick Arbuckle does amazing when he come off the bench, but as a starter, he's not really good. Except for the last time when he did play for this coach, Den Whittle. Um, he was pretty good that year in 2019, coming in the backup Bo Levi. But right now, I'm not I'm not feeling them. I think Winnipeg gets this their, their season turned around a little bit more. They get the win over there. Um, just for the win. The game is relatively close. Winnipeg plus 100. Give me that. The, the last game, Rudy, you're on mute, but I'll take it over. Yeah, we can't hear you, Rudy. The, the last game of the week is the Toilet Bowl. The, t- um, the Toilet between, Bowl. Between I'm, Hamilton and, and, and Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah, so they, which, one of the, which one of the losers is going to win? They're giving Hamilton 4.5. I don't know who's going to win, but I'm taking 4.5. I, I'm taking Hamilton 4.5. Um, give me Hamilton for the win also. But what I'm taking is the 4.5. And the over in this game is 52.5. I like it at minus 107. And I'm rolling with that, that they score some points this game in Edmonton. So that's what I'm rolling with this week. 4-0, you got to love it, baby. So you're taking Edmonton in this game? No, I'm Hamilton. taking, I'm taking I'm Hamilton. Take, I'm taking Hamilton. Hamilton. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm not picking Edmonton again until they win the game. I, I'm not doing it. I'll I be will a fool. That, I, I will tell you that CFLCA is picking Toronto. Um, That's cool. They've been wrong before. I'm pretty sure their record is worse than mine. Sixty-five. Sixty-five percent to thirty-five percent, and they're actually taking Hamilton, and then they're taking uh, Calgary and Saskatchewan. Yeah. But Nick picks this week. I, I feel it deep down in my soul, baby. This is the week that it get done. 4-0. Oh. We'll Four be 8-0. Oh, there, there, there you hear it, folks. Nick's picks of the week are Saskatchewan, Calgary, Winnipeg, and Hamilton. Those are the victors. That's who he's going with. That's who he's taking his reputation on. And we'll see if he comes back at 8-8 eight and eight next week for the year or if he's going to be 4-12. and 12. Yep. <laughs> or somewhere in between. <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in there. <laughs> Guaranteed. Oh, that means you're guaranteed to lose then. Okay, so we t- we taking the Charles Barkley. Guaranteed. <laughs> now, finally, we're jumping into uh, the O Canada, O Canada Players of the Week. I will not sing the national anthem again. Um, Please. But, uh, Nick, who are your... Players of the week. My O Canada, O Canada offensive player of the week. <laughs> Wasn't too much offense going on this week, man. So um I like a Jew a Jew for Sass as the runner up. I like the four catches he came in this week. He had four for one ten. In the second half, I gotta give the man some shout out, some credit for that. Rudy. He changed the game. He was a momentum changer. He swung the whole pen- pendulum around. They they got the game grooving when he came in the game. It was energy was amazing. I gotta give the kids some credit. 
But I'm going to go with Jake Myers, man, 25 for 32, 307 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Calgary quarterback Jake the Snake Myers, he gets the old Canada, old Canada Offensive Player of the Week. Defense this week, we're going to go with – it could have been Dwayne Hendricks from um, Hamilton, man, um, former Toronto player. He was just – his stats aren't that impressive, but he had two tackles, one sack, um, another pass breakup, but a couple of pressures, man. He was just all over the field giving them hell. Um, Jameer Thurman had that big force fumble against uh, Winnipeg that changed the game. But I'm going to go with Roland Milligan again uh, uh, for his second week two times already, man. He had four, PU, four PBUs in one game. He was just everywhere. He should have had an interception. Um, to to add his lead leading leading four interceptions per game four interceptions this season, but he also had three tackles and two tackles on special teams. The guy is just really going for defensive player of the year right now. Um, he's been balling. I can't give him enough credit. He's wherever you zeros everywhere on the field for Saz, and that's part of the reason they're five and one this year, man. Big shout out to him. He has the rest of the defense on fire, but he's leading the way. Good job to is, him, man. Is, is he sharing our stuff? Uh, I mean, I mean, do us a favor, guy. Yeah, M- Mr. Milligan, he's now made you player of the week twice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to. Um, I, I still haven't seen you share our share the graphic from the first time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I can't keep giving it to you, Roland. Like, like <laughs> we, 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 we need a, we need some quid pro quo here. You know? Yeah, it's come on, obviously. Roland, man. I mean, we're, 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 we're promoting you. Come on, man, promote us back. Yeah, Do man, because you're, you're an amazing player, man. It's fun to watch you at that boundary half position, man. There's a lot of work going over there, but you're shutting a lot of shit down. Even when people are catching the ball, you're making them pay for it, and that's fun and exciting to watch. Um, when you see a DB just be so mm-hmm. physical and tenacious like that. Um, kudos to that man. Um, keep balling, baby. So, Nick, are there any? Is anything? Has anything of this season surprised you? Has anything surprised me besides Winnipeg being two and five? Um, I, I, yeah, I thought of course I, that surprises you because you're yeah chilling. because they came in as the betting favorites to win the championship this year, but a lot of injuries it on. Seems like, it seems like they're always the betting favorites. To because, win the I mean, when you go to four great cups in a row, what do you expect to happen? Um, and then you have the best quarterback in the league until, you know, this year to how he's been playing. You're going to always be considered one of those teams, but he has been playing well. They're getting too many penalties. Their offensive line is just not that good this year, and that's been one of their main, you know, main things, how they won games. They had a great, amazing um, O-line that, that ran the ball well. They could have put any running back back there, and they were getting 100 yards. You know, it was just good times for them. So that has surprised me. Their defense, you know, you lose, you know, your top DN, um, Jackson, Jackson, Jeff Coat in retirement, a little bit of changes in the secondary, you know, getting a little bit older, and things just change, and that's what it looked like right now. It just looked like an old, beaten down team that's been to the Great Cup four years, and they're just trying to make it through another season, and they're trying to motivate themselves to get through the season. That's what it looked like right now. But I'm surprised. Um, I'm not surprised about Sass. Um, I thought with the coaching change, they get the quarterback that they'll be pretty good this year with the people that they brought in. But the way they're doing it, I wasn't expecting it. Um, and they've been a, quite a surprise in that way of how they're winning the games, how they're grinding it out, how they're pulling it out with their backup quarterback early in the season. Um, that's um, So that's a big surprise for me right there. And other than that, everybody's been pretty middle ground of what I thought they would be. Um, I had Calgary as one of the better teams, the top four or five teams to start the season. They've been right around there. And Ottawa, they just have to show me something against a good team. All right, folks. Well, this is a record pace time for our programming of Well, Come not really, really. I got to go into a couple things. Now, I'm going to keep it short, though. Oh, okay. Go keep ahead. I'm going to keep it short. Um, The referees in this league have to do better, man. These pass interference calls that are being made by them, and even when they go to the damn boot, and y'all are looking at these plays, are y'all going to let the DBs have a chance to make a play on the ball right now? Or are we just going to – you touch them with a freaking pinky and it got to be called? Guys, we have to be objective about playing the, the position and, and you covering a guy. You're not just not going to have your hands on the receiver at all. If you're not impeding the receiver, if I beat him to the spot first, that shouldn't be a call, referee. What are we doing, man? That Winnipeg Saz game had three P.I. calls that weren't P.I. calls, and they compl- – I, they come, they changed the game. They gave other team points when they shouldn't have got points just because the referee or the, the boot figured that they can make these calls or make these changes when they shouldn't. 
and that was just completely terrible. They need to fix that. And then you have another play in against, uh, I want to say, uh, Hamilton and Toronto game. The quarterback throws the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Hamilton picks the ball up. He goes score it, and the referees don't call it. They go to the boot, and the boot says, yeah, he threw the ball for it. What are y'all looking at? They compete. He definitely threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Like, it's clear as day. What are we, how we go to the boot and don't get things right? Come on, man. Be better, I, man. I can tell you how. That's really easy. Uh, wow. They, they allow the booth to exist. Yeah, well, they need to. They, they, this is happening in every sport, Nick. This is this is what's happened to officiating across all sports. This has happened. Well, we, the booth is trying to get it right. Past. You you have 10 no, views. You, you know how you do it? You eliminate the booth. I, 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 and live with the results? Live with the results. They're called in the field. They have. They're, they rely. This is okay. I'm going in a completely different area. Now. Yeah, we keep it short. But, but professional sports rely on compu- on on replays now. They re- rely on replays for everything. Like I cannot stand the challenge call in the NBA. I yeah. don't like it because if you get it wrong the first time, you don't get another one. Yeah. Um, yet the referee can make an egregiously bad call and it can't be fixed. Or if you have a ball that gets knocked out of someone's hands. But you fouled the shit out of him to make it happen. <laughs> you can't actually change that. I think now next like year the, they're actually adjusting that to change to. that to where you could call a foul. But the fact that that wasn't inclusive in it in the past has cost people games. Because sometimes um, the referees see what happened. They'd be like, well, like, you know, not to, to, to make the situation, you know, complicated. The, the right team is getting the ball anyway. But then the other team like, well, you well, know. They challenged it now. So now. Technically. So now, technically we did yeah. the ball. We did not so, get the ball. Even though yeah, exactly. we caused it by what we did. Exactly. And that's happening in the NBA, and it's costing teams games. Um, they rely on – I mean, just like, for example, oh, you got fouled. You got bumped on the head. Oh, my God, we got to go to replay to go look to see if it's a flagrant foul. If you can't call a flagrant foul when it happens, it's not a it ain't a flagrant foul. It ain't a flagrant foul. It's not a flagrant foul in any shape, way, shape, or form, in any capacity. It's no. not flagrant. Mm-hmm. Because if it was flagrant – you, you would, would have called it on the court, and you would go immediately. Mean, flagrant mean you intentionally did it, or it's like you, you have you seen it. It's like you seen them that shit. There's no, no doubt. No questions. There's no questions, <laughs> and that's why I can't stand what's happened to all these leagues. So flagrant fouls in the NBA, they rely on replay on everything. They rely. I mean, I remember when Reggie Miller hit a three against the Knicks one year, where it was after the the clock hit zero that won a game. I think it was against the Knicks. That would never happen today because they'd replay it, and they're like, "Oh, it's late." You know what? That too. I don't care. The call on the court is the call on the court. I think, I think it has know, to be a, a midline. I, I don't want to have any of it. I don't want to have you either because they don't you because if you're using it, don't tell me that it works. But then you still get the call wrong. And you're looking from the booth. And you're looking at it from 18 different angles. You're not and, even and in then, the building. You're not even in the building. I, I, I mean, I, I, it happens constantly. And then you have it. Hockey has it. Like if you didn't call off sides when it happened, don't call off sides forty five seconds later when they score a goal. Or when they take away the points in the NBA, like, well, he didn't get it off in time. Now the like, score like, is adjusted and how you played in that moment is different. Or or you remember Max re- remember, remember Max Truce in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Celtics. I'm at the game, game seven. Max Truce hits a three. You come back eight to ten minutes later after a timeout, yeah, and we just up. lost three points because they said they were looking to see. This is how stupid it is. They're looking to see if he was on the line shooting the three. He was a foot behind the line, but then they said, "Well, he was out of bounds." Well, he wasn't out of bounds. His foot, his foot was heel, clearly heel, hovering. Heel, his heel was up. clearly hovering the freaking line. Yep. He never stepped down, and they took away three points like that. And they ch- that was the ball game. Mm-hmm. That was the game in that situation. Yep. Changed momentum. Yep. And actually, the Heat were down two points when Jimmy Butler comes and rushes a three point shot when realistically, we should have been up a point yep. with the ball. So they do this in replay. Now, in football, what do we have now? There was a second where they did, re- they did replays on pass interference. Are you kidding? Like, you can't replay pass interference. Well, CFL does. Well, that's a problem to me, and and that's and that's what I'm saying. They're all were, did they do it five years ago? Yeah, ten years ago. I, I don't know. I don't believe so. I don't know when it started. It's like all this stuff, all this technology. The, the technology is a failure and a flop, you know. And in, in, in baseball, you, you, they want to, they blow those calls too in baseball. 
but I, I, and, I think, and, and they're replaying. I mean, but in football, it, oh, helmet to helmet. Sorry, it, man. If you didn't like, if you didn't see it happen, then it didn't happen. It's never going to be perfect at the end of the day. It's never, never going to be perfect. Get rid of replay. Replay is a waste. Deal with the situation. It's never going to be perfect. Um, but Miami definitely. hurt, dude. The Miami Hurricanes against Georgia Tech. Donald Cheney was clearly on the ground in that game. It was the dumbest call on earth by Mario Cristobal, but there was not. It was inconclusive. I think it. I think it was. It was, not inclusive. It was completely con- obvious that he was on the ground. When the ball got ripped out, clear as day, clear as day. If you saw it, you you know he's on the ground. He's literally laying on the ground. He was laying on the ground. And yet they replay and they say he fumbled the ball. Yeah. Did you see yeah. it, Nick? Did you yeah, see that? I thought, I thought he, was he, down. he was I thought down. He was down. I thought he fumbled. How could you say he thought he fumbled it? It looked like he fumbled. It looked like he got punished. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. He went down. His, his arm was. Let's, let's, his let's arm was literally on the ground. <laughs> You, how would, like, you, didn't, you, didn't, you don't even remember. You need to go look back. No, it I was not a fumble. Remember they it. even said it wasn't a fumble after the game. They uh, even said it wasn't a fumble after the game. But, on, but during the game, it's a fumble, and yeah. it cost Miami the game, that's and Miami good. lost. I'm looking at huh? it right now. It wasn't a fumble. It wasn't a fumble. Right. It was a horrible call by Cristobal. Yes, terrible. You kneel the ball. You kneel the ball. The game is over. Right. But it doesn't matter. Like it's like. They he even won. had a replay for this. He was down. Yeah. But he's on top of the... the, the, the he's the, down. He's on he's top down. of the person. He's, down. he's on top of the linebacker. You had replay, man. Yeah, you got to get it right, though. At the end of the day... Play. He's no down. What. I'm looking at it myself again. He's down. That's tough. That one's tough. His because... left elbow was already on the ground. It wasn't tough. His yeah. left elbow was clearly on the ground. Yeah. Look at his left elbow. Look at his left elbow. His left elbow is down, down, and now the ball got pulled. You saw the pull? Yeah, that's the pull. pull. The ball. He's his left elbow, and they had another angle to show it. Clearly down. Here we go. Here's another angle. The third angle. Uh, He's down. He was so clearly down. Look, his elbow's down. Now the pull comes out. He was he was down. He was down. He was down. Well, I'm gonna give you that. They replayed this and gave it to him. Yep. They can't even get these calls right with replay. <laughs> so that was and probably so, a fuck. That's why I said get rid of replay. So that's probably a you fuck you to Crystal Ball for doing dumb shit. Like, well, he deserved it. I mean, I'm, and I'm a Hurricane fan. I'm like, he deserved that shit because that was yep. a fucking disgrace. But the fact that you're actually not, you're too stupid to not kneel the ball down. But this is my problem with all these sports. They're using, they use replays on tennis. Like, I mean, tennis, like everything is a replay now. Well, they got so much technology that they figure that, you know, oh, we can see that it didn't. Directly hit the but line. They're not even using fo- they're not even using photo. They're using digital technology in tennis. Yeah. So the, the picture you have is not even the ball. It's a splotch. Yes. A, a shade over a line. Mm-hmm. How can you like? I, I want to see the actual ball, not the mm-hmm. not a technologic. I, I I I don't like replay. I've never liked replay unless it works for my team. Um, <laughs> I don't. I just don't like replay across the board because if you can't get it right after the replay, you shouldn't have it. And the way it works in the NBA is a disgrace. I just don't like it. I, I, I've never liked it. And, and you know, you're mentioning it's it's they're replaying it and still calling this crap. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, there you have uh, it. That's my thought on on, on, on officiating because official officials have become reliant on replay. To not do their job. They're afraid to do their job. Well, it was so much complaints about, you know, getting stuff the right way and letting the play play out sometimes. So that's my problem with if if you're gonna do it, let the play play out and let the boot come back and just fix it immediately. If we have any doubts about it, let's not But the boot ain't fixing it. They're getting it wrong too. It shouldn't always have to go to a challenge. Like my my coach shouldn't have to throw out a flag in certain situations. Let me ask you a question. How many plays a game do you think the do you think that the the wrong call has a massive impact on every game. Yeah. Like how many games, how many times a game do you have an incorrect call? It's, it's, yeah, it's more, it's more than once. It happens all the, all it the happens games. every play. Yeah, there's all a hold, the time with there's a hold on, there's a hold on every play. All day long. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a hold on every wrong, play. You can pick and choose when you want to call it, when it's egregious <laughs> enough to call it, when it's egregious <laughs> enough to call it. So, I remember I got called for holding in high school. You on did a it, you did it. I, I, No, you I, did. I didn't, I, I didn't even, I, 
it was it was crazy because I watched it on film. And I'm like, where did I hold this guy? Because yeah. it, it cost my guy a 90 yard touchdown, run. and and so I felt really really bad. But I'm like, the guy basically ran himself off the play, and I just shoved him out the way. Yeah. And they called a holding on me. I'm sitting here like, and I knew it when they called. I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah. He literally ran himself off the play. Mm. I need to replay that, but it didn't work. I mean, I watched it on film. It wasn't holding. Even my coach was like, it's not Rudy, you did it. You look like a person that would do it. <laughs> I, I know what I did. I know I would illegally chop block. That uh, I did. I, I did that every. I did that every time I had a bigger guy against me. I would illegally chop block. I tell my left, my my left tackle to hit him high, and I'm hitting him low. God damn! Rudy. Never, never got called. Not one time. But wasn't that kind of allowed a little bit back then? No, it was no. illegal as fuck. It was illegal then too. I thought they changed it like recently. No, Ill- illegal chop high blocks. Low, high low. The engagement shit back yeah. then was still illegal in 1994. Okay. Okay. In high school, it was still illegal. I thought, <laughs> so, I thought you were in '64, but hey, maybe '64. <laughs> it would have right, been it would have been legal then. Yeah, that would have been legal. sure for sure. But um, all right, folks, that's what we got this week uh, from Come On CFL. Please remember to like, subscribe, and follow if you're supporting this page. Share it in Canada. Share this all in Canada because this is what it's for. It's for Canada, and of course, for Americans that like Canadian football and and do follow the CFL who are from Canada and are down here, um, living in the states, and of course. Remember our partners, Bet99. Be sure to subscribe and, and place your bets on Bet99. Use the code COMEON99, all capital letters, C-O-M-E-O-N-9-9. And please bet responsibly. You have a credit uh, a match on your first bet up to $1,500. So take advantage of that. We will see you next week. Come on now.